Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is of course me, Xander. Welcome. How are you doing? It has been a long time since I said a sentence like that. It's pretty damn hard to get some time and space and privacy to get one of these videos where I just kind of chat shit about my life and my head. So as you are aware, before I started traveling and probably the biggest reason for me traveling, my mental health was pretty damn bad when I was living in England. I was forever going up and down, suffering with my depression and anxiety, and living in Brighton, I was really, really not happy at all. I most recently was on a pill called metazapine, and I was on a particularly high dose, 45 milligrams, and that pill really can make you suffer in terms of one of the biggest side effects is drowsiness. So about an hour after you take it, you're pretty much gonna pass out and for the entire morning, the next morning, right up until about 12, 1 o'clock. I don't know about everyone else who took it, but I, I feel really, really drowsy and really, really groggy. Hello, baby. Hi. Hi. You want to be on YouTube? You want to be on YouTube? She's just going to sit there. She's a poser. Before I decided to go on my traveling trip, I wanted to check in with my GP and figure out a plan of action for how I was gonna manage my mental health and manage the symptoms that I deal with, and also my prescription while I was abroad. We came to the conclusion that it was not a great idea to try and take you know, six to, six to 12 months worth of pills with me. So we decided that before I went on my trip, I would start reducing the dose with a view to during my travels coming off it completely. And this is about two months before I started traveling I moved from 45 to 30 and then 30 to 15 that was about the time that I started my traveling and then for my first month of traveling I was on 15 second month I had stopped altogether now I was really really nervous about stopping my pills because history has told me that every time I stop taking my antidepressants whether or not it's following the GP's advice or recklessly stopping them on my own accord it always goes tits up for me I always within a couple of months really start to struggle really start to suffer and and my mood just completely plummets. On the flip side to this, having left work about July time, things were already looking up a lot for me. I, I had a lot of time to clear my head and work on myself and start to feel better, which was in itself a luxury. And that in combination with the fact that I'm now traveling the world and meeting amazing people and doing amazing things and constantly surrounded by sunshine, my GP thought it would be a safe enough bet that I would be able to reduce the dose and come off my pills with a view to having to manage my symptoms while I'm out here using the techniques that I've learned from my talking therapies and the CBT and if I needed to, going to see a doctor out here. But obviously having spent the last year so miserable and so upset, I was really a little bit terrified to go back into that place. I didn't want to come out here, start traveling, not be on pills, and then be as miserable and desolate as I felt when I was in Brighton. Going traveling on your own anyway is a pretty scary thing to do because I don't have a support network to look after me. I don't have people who know my moods and understand what I'm like to help me when I do get into these down places. Yes, FaceTime is a great tool and I do always have my mom at the other end of the phone if I do ever need anything or need someone to talk to. It's funny because when I was making notes to remember all the points that I wanted to communicate for this video, I was looking back through this notebook actually, which is where I used to jot down kind of all my crazy thoughts when I was going through my downtime and just looking back at some of the pages filled with just anxiety and craziness and just not being able to think about anything, to-do list after to-do list and just letting all my thoughts and emotions out just so I could clear my head a little bit. It blows my mind now to look back and think about who that person was. Even going back and watching the YouTube videos that I was making just a few months ago and seeing how that person was a totally different person to the person that I am now. And I remember thinking when I was making these videos, I just want my true self back. I just want to be the person that I know I am on my inside. And, and this person who I am now is so happy and I have so much going on that just gives me a reason to feel good. But even right up until the first, first few weeks of traveling, I was still making these crazy notes, still not able to deal with the simplest of things, just dealing, you know, with the day's itinerary. So although day to day my, my head is in a much better place than it ever was before, staying present is still one of my bigger problems. I still find myself thinking six months ahead, a year ahead, five years ahead. What am I gonna do with my future? What am I gonna do with my career? How am I gonna be successful? How am I gonna be covered in tattoos? How am I gonna get fit again? How am I gonna go vegan, you know? I do still have all these thoughts, but it's much better than it ever was before and when you're in a beautiful place like I am now, it's way easier to stay present because I'm not trying to think about 
being in another place. I'm happy here, it feels good to be here. One thing I don't give enough credit for and I always underestimate is how much the weather impacts my mood. It's not the same for everyone and some people love life in the UK but for me, living in the UK where you have rain and grey and cold for so many days of the year and you know the winter is pretty much just a write-off, you don't really want to leave the house and even in the summer when it's raining every day, you, you can't always be outdoors and active and doing things. It really brings me down. And the sunshine changes my mood like that. So being out in good weather is life changing for me. One month post stopping my pills completely, I don't know if I've ever been this happy ever in my life. Traveling is truly an amazing experience. And I know it's fucking cliche. I know I am your classic gap year and I know I'm finding myself and whatever, but this is the reason that people do it, because it fucking works. I'm now able to cope with situations that I would never been able to cope with before. The, the smallest trigger could have uh, sent me on a downward spiral and I'd have spent the following week majorly depressed or crazy anxiety or whatever. But now I can go two days without electricity and running water, no Wi-Fi and spend 10 hours on a bus or be delayed somewhere or meet really bad people or whatever and it won't faze me, I can just deal with it. I can just pick my stuff up and carry on living my life. Although I now am in a good place, I know a lot of you guys aren't. The struggle with mental health carries on every single day. My comments are always open. If you wanted any advice, please feel free to ask me a question down below. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, check out my other social media, whatever you wanna do. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.